The first unit for the third grading is actually concerned on triangle similarity. But before we could dig deeper on the triangle similarity, we need to come up with two sets of reviews. Number one, the concern for this video, is we will talk about the, a short review on ratio and proportion. As we all know, ratio is a relationship between two different quantities or two different numbers. And the proportion is actually the equation or an equality between two or more ratios. For items number one to four, we are asked here to solve for the unknown, which would actually satisfy the given proportion. To do that, we are going to use here the fundamental law of proportion. This, this law of proportion allows us to take the product of the extremes and the means and equate them to further solve for the unknown. To do that, let's just simply use a common uh, uh, terminology, cross multiply. So let's start. You multiply this and multiply this one for number one. So you have 9 times 10 must be equal to 6 times x. And then you have 90 is equal to 6x. To solve for x, you divide both sides by 6. So you have 15 is equal to x. And symmetric property allows us to change both sides without changing the value and the expression. And we get the value for x, which is equivalent to 15. If you are not yet convinced that the, answer, the, the result for the variable x for item number 1 is 15, you could always substitute this to the given. And you will have here, as form of a checking, you have 10 over 15, question mark, 6 over 9. And simply take the lowest terms of each of the expression, each of the ratio rather. So you have 2 thirds is equal to the other side, which is through two thirds. Since both of them results to two thirds, that means x is equal to 15 is the correct value for y. And this two thirds here, just for a short review, is what we call as the ratio of a similarity, if we talk about similarity of triangles later on. Let's continue the same process as we go to number two. Let's use this, the fundamental law of proportion. And you have 2 times 32 is equal to y times y. 2 times 32 is equal to 64. Uh, That's y squared. Okay. And then we are looking for the value of y, not y squared. So we could actually take the square root of both sides. And that would be the square root of 64 and the square root of y squared. So you have here, take note that when you take the square root of a number, you will get positive negative root of this, which is actually 8. And the other side will only have variable y. Applying the symmetric property, you have y is equal to positive and negative 8. So you have two results here. If you're going to check this, use the given equation. So you have 2 over, let's use the positive value first. Positive 8 must be equal to 8 over 32. In lowest terms, 2 eighths is 1 fourth. The other side is also 1 fourth. That means positive 8 is a correct answer. As for negative 8, you have 2 over negative 8 is equal to, or must be equal to, negative 8 over 32. So that's negative 1 fourth here. The other side will also be negative 1 fourth. They are still the same. The two ratios are still, are still forms of proportion. That would mean negative 8 is also acceptable. So both of our answers, positive and negative 8, are possible or correct, or the values of y in item number 2. These are both possible, but when we reach later on measurements, we need to 
uh, trim down the values to a specific answer. You will try to see that later on as we move for, forward. As of the moment, both are acceptable. Let's proceed to number four. Number four, just forget that you cannot do that, okay? Rather, simply apply the fundamental law of proportion. So you have here m times 2, sorry, must be equal to, you have m plus 2 times 6. So one side will become 2m, and the other side, distributive property, you have 6m plus 12. Let me apply the symmetric property first. 6m is equal to 2m, I'm sorry, 6m plus 12 is equal to 2m. You may apply symmetric property in the middle. Um, we'll just apply it so that I will not have any negative uh, value as a domain for our numerical coefficient of the variable. So you'll have to subtract 6m. Uh, sorry, 2m rather on both sides. Okay, so we'll have the result here. Or let's not do that. So you have to subtract 12 on both sides. So you will have 6m is equal to 2m minus 12. And further, subtract 2m both sides. So you will have the result of 4m is equal to negative 12. Finally, divide both sides by 4. And the result for m is negative 3. Okay? So again, need to check this to further satisfy okay, our uh, proportion. So you have negative 3 over negative 3 plus 2 is it equal to 6 over 2. Okay. To do that, you will have here the expression negative 3 over negative 1. Lowest term, the other side is a 3. So you have 3 equal to 3. That would mean the result for m, which is negative 3, is the correct answer. Okay. So again, here your answer is a negative value as of the moment is acceptable we will look into a situation probably later and decide if it's possible already or not by the way when you try to solve for this you could also express 6 over 2 already as a 3 so you can rewrite this as m over m plus 2 is equal to 3 or 3 over 1 so that it could be easier for you nevertheless you will have the same result and finally, for number four, apply still the fundamental law of proportion. So you have a times a plus, sorry, a plus five is equal to two times three. And then you have a squared plus five a is equal to six. Unlike in number two earlier, wherein you will have y squared is equal to 64, and you can just simply take the square root of both sides. Here, you have an expression with uh, a variable a. What you could do here is you could come up with a um, standard form for a quadratic equation. So you have a squared plus 5a minus 6 equal to zero. And after that, you may actually use here the less learnings or understanding in solving the roots of a quadratic equation. You could factor this out. A, A equal to zero. To do that, again, let me repeat, A, C, A. A is one, C is negative six. The result is negative six. Factors of negative 6, which could actually result to positive 5. You have 2 and negative 3. No. 
factors are positive 6 and negative 1. Positive 6 and negative 1 times, uh, positive, rather, positive 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. But when you add them up, that's 5. These are correct. So you have positive 6 and negative 1. So zero factor property allows us to solve both of them by equating them to zero. Because this could only be zero if either or both are zero. So a is equal to negative 6 and a is equal to positive 1. These are the results for the value of a. Again, to satisfy our need, let's try to do the checking for both of the values. Let's try negative 6. Negative 6 plus 5 all over 2, is it the same as 3 over negative 6? Negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1 all over 2. Lowest term here is also negative 1 half. Check. Therefore, negative 6 is a correct answer. Checking for the second value, which is 1. So you have 1 plus 5 over 2. Is it the same as question mark? 3 over a, which is 1. 1 plus 5 is 6 over 2. Question mark. 3 over 1. Lowest term for both sides, 3. 3, they are the same. Therefore, the value for a here is correct. Okay. So these are the results for finding the unknown under these proportions here. Again, this might seem too easy because these are actually covered already in your previous years. We just included this as part of our coverage because when you talk about triangle similarity, we are going to talk about proportions. So you may or may not continue uh, uh, the answer this one, or uh, but I'm going to challenge you to do this again so that it, you could actually practice your speed, though you already know what are the results and what are the answers. Speed is um, one thing that you need to master when you're, when you're taking examinations. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Goodbye.